Oh nice, I forgot about this cup of tea. I love that concept. Hi, I'm currently putting clothes away, but I just wanted to talk while I do that. So basically I was folding these clothes and just thinking about the fact that with the seasons changing, I usually switch out my wardrobe and I'll put like all my shorts like these. <laughs> I'll put these away until the spring semester. But I was just thinking, I graduate in December. So when I put these shorts away, I'm not gonna be taking them out again until I'm like graduated. And I just had this dumb surreal moment that like, whoa, these are the last couple months of my education. <laughs> and because of that, I think I want to not become a daily vlogger, but I feel like whenever I edit my reading vlogs, I'm so focused on trying to include what I'm reading that I feel like I'm missing out just talking about what's happening with my life. And I keep trying to edit my vlogs down to be so concise and jump cutted because they're so long, but I kind of just want to slow it down and just like include more than just, hey guys, here's what I'm reading. And I know that could cause some stirs <laughs> because obviously I'm here to do those reading clips. I'm in this very... <laughs> turbulent time in my life right now where things are going to start changing really soon and i want to document that as much as possible even if you don't care about my life <laughs> and you just want me to talk about the books i'm reading i'm gonna go for it and i'm gonna try i'm not gonna be like the next casey neistat filming you know like throughout my day like here's me waking up here's me walking to class like i'm not just gonna whip out a camera in my life and start recording everything but i feel like i don't want to only focus on this one thing so i don't know that's just my current idea now i'm gonna put away my clothes. So I am currently neck deep in reading Moby Dick. Here she is. Here's my progress. This is one of those books that I'm really enjoying, but I know for sure that if I wasn't reading it for class, I would not be enjoying it. What I'm having to do is literally read the book as I listen to the audiobook just because it doesn't make sense to me one way and it doesn't make sense to me the other way but somehow both of those together click. Therefore it's slow going but it's so beautiful and there's like five different themes that I'm obsessed with that I want to write all in my own essays about. I also want to disclaim that this week I am booked so I don't think I'm gonna be reading a ton. I guess the reason why this vlog took so long to publish is because I had taken off like a week just to do schoolwork. Every time I go to talk about things in my vlog now, I always have to apologize for it. And I hate that. I hate that whenever I read a book for class, I'm like, sorry, I'm talking about it. You guys don't care. I hate that when I unbox things, I'm like, sorry, I'm only unboxing things that I'm not actually reading. As much as I want to put out content that people enjoy, I also want to put out content that I want to film. So I don't know. I'm just super self-conscious about what y'all are actually interested in seeing, which is dumb because I I know so many people comment that you would watch me eating like a bowl of cereal but I still want to appeal to people who have shorter attention spans or maybe don't want to hear me ramble about Cheetos. I've just been on the struggle bus with my videos because I don't know which direction I want to go. Also like someone asked me on Curious Cat the other day what's a video I'm proud of and I just think to myself like I haven't been proud of a video in a long time because these reading vlogs are kind of messy to me. I love filming them and I love posting them and I like how I just like don't really put that much effort into it. I just show what I'm doing and I put it up because at the end of the day I'm not YouTubing as my profession. I'm YouTubing because it's fun <laughs> and I want to share my opinions with the world and like interact with people about books. But I'm not making it into like a whole ordeal where I'm like putting on makeup every clip and I'm not like <laughs> filming it during the daylight with sunlight illuminating me in the best lighting. I'm getting self-conscious that... I should be doing those things. Okay, good night. I'm sweating out of breath from speed walking home from class, but it came in the mail today. This is my copy that Harper Collins offered to send me, and I was like, yes. I still have one coming from Amazon because I couldn't bear to part with it because I wanted to be able to buy one and contribute to the New York Times bestselling list. And then I still have to go out and buy my Target copy because I want to get the extra bonus scene. But guys, it's here. It's so pretty. If you're really confused because you have no idea why I'm freaking out, this is Tahada Mafi's newest book and Tahada Mafi is my favorite author of all time. She wrote the Shatter Me series and she wrote the duology Furthermore. And this is her first adventure 
venture into YA contemporary. So this is her autobiographical story about being a Muslim teenager growing up in 2002 after the 9-11 attacks and the bigotry and xenophobia that she faced. This book's about a girl named Shireen whose brother is a break dancer and so she gets into break dancing and she's moving around to a bunch of new schools and settles at this one school and has having to make new friends and deal with the assumptions people make about her because she wears a headscarf. It's so wonderful. I kind of want to reread this today and then do a video review for tomorrow. Oh no. Like I'm already flipping to page one to read it. I can't. I really can't. Whitney. Okay. That's all of my update for today is I got, I got my pre-order. No, it's not my pre-order. I got sent it by Harper Teen. So BT Dubs, huge shout out to Michael and Harper Collins for sending me a copy and recognizing that I will scream my little witty novel's heart out about Tadamapi novels. Okay. I'm going to start my Moby Dick homework now. Me, Nicole. One second in and you're already choking. What's more iconic? I have a reading update, but I want it to be more interesting because Kaylin's here. I just read to Kaylin the wall sex chapter from Akafas. How was that? How many stars? I'm just confused. A little disturbed. Anyway, back to me. Thrust. Oh. What does thrust mean, mommy? Speaking of thrusting. <laughs> Christina Lauren. So the other night I was like, what can I do to not do my homework? I decided instead of doing my homework, I would start and start the, I, mm. Yeah. I decided that instead of starting my homework, I was going to continue this book. So I had been 30 pages into this since August and I got 80 pages into it now and it's so fucking good. This might be my new favorite Christine Lauren book. <gasps> so this book is about a girl who draws comics and a guy who owns a comic store. Shut up. Huh. Just Nerds. shut up. But it's so sweet. And it's like, okay, that plot alone, who cares, right? But the fact that these characters are just so soft and sweet and nice. And they're not the type of like crazy, rowdy young adults to be like, let's go fucking party. Like the first couples in the first two books like all had one night stands and that was how they met each other. Night Sam or one night Sam? I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. Yeah, apparently I have a fetish for night stands. Yeah, so like the first night these two people meet, instead of like Sarah J massing it up, they take a walk together and they bond and they're just so sweet and like awkward around each other in that like stage of they're not quite friends, they're not quite in a relationship, but it's not like uncomfortable or cliche. My reading update. I, I want to put it closer to you so that I'm not. Oh, hi. So it's going to focus on me, which it should, but you know. Oh, Shia, Shia, you too. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so I'm still reading. There's someone inside your house. It's pretty good so far. I think I'm on page like 100. There's been some romance. But yeah, pretty good so far. That's all I have. I mean. <laughs> Disgusting! Not an interesting reading update. I don't have my good lighting, but it's fine. I have not had my pants buttoned since I walked through the door of this apartment. Disgusting! Do you have anything else to add before we go? I'm sad. <laughs> you want to take a nap right now? At 8 p.m.? Listen. Good night. Here's the kind of Wednesday I'm having. I just spent $13 to order some subpar brownies from Pizza Hut. So once I finish these two essays, I get to indulge. I read last night when I stayed up super late and then I read today when I was procrastinating doing these essays. So I'm now on page 243 of Dark Wild Night and I have made so many sticky tabs. I adore this book. It's so soft and consensual and I love it. Oh no, I don't know if it ranks better than Josh and Hazel, but it's up there with Josh and Hazel as like a really good one. Which is random that it's the third in a series. I wish that you didn't have to read the other books in the series to get this, but ugh. Mm -hmm. Okay, essay time. I haven't had to write a analysis essay that's just purely based on my opinion in four years. I literally just have to argue whether or not cell phones should be allowed in movie theaters. And I'm living my best life, it's so easy. I want to set up like an aesthetic shot of me doing homework, but... Who am I? Hello 
friends, I'm once again home for another weekend. It was my mom's birthday on Thursday, so I surprised her. And we went out to dinner last night, and today I was like, listen, I'm gonna go to Target and get that Target special edition of A Very Large Expanse of Sea. And then I realized I am a fool. So what I did not know is that the exclusive edition is online only. So I went into stores ready to buy a couple copies and uh, was told they're not anywhere in my area because they're probably just online exclusive, which stinks and I had no idea. Whatever, I just ordered them online. Hopefully they'll be there by Monday. Knock, knock, who's there? Me in bad lighting. I finished a book. <laughs> I finished Dark Wild Night by Christina Lauren and I gave it a full glowing five stars because I don't have anything that I thought was wrong with it. And that's not sarcasm. I genuinely really, really liked it. I, the only thing I'm bummed about is that this is the third book in a series, so it's like, you gotta slog through a really boring, crappy book to get here. I mean, the first book in this series is great. Second book in this series is weird. This one is amazing. Out of all of Christina Lauren's books, I think this has the most human characters with the most realistic conflict. It's a best friends to lovers feast if you're into that. As far as reading it without needing to read the rest of the books in the series, I think you would have to just because this plot is contingent off the fact that these two characters meet in book one. So I would recommend maybe like skimming the first 50 pages of book one and then diving into this, but yeah. Loved this. And then while I'm home this weekend, I got three books. The first book I actually had waiting for me in the mail had come as an Amazon package. This is from Amber who is one of my friends on Twitter. She sent a book to me from my Amazon wish list and said, hi Whitney, I hope you enjoy. Love you. So thank you so much Amber. She got me a book I'm so excited to read. It's Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. This is by Jessica Townsend. Everyone I know, mostly Emma without an I almost said Emma without an H in Sarah books. <laughs> Sarah without an H in Emma books. Really love this. It's a middle grade series. It just reminds me of Furthermore by Tahara Mafi. So I'm gonna read it. But thank you so much, Amber. This is a middle grade book I am very excited to try. Then today I went to my library bookstore that's located in my hometown. They sell books there for like $2. So I just wanted to, to drop by. See what's good. First I found a copy of A Discovery of Witches for $1.50. This is by Deborah Harkness, BT Dubs. I've been recommended this countless times. One of my good friends Savannah says this is one of her favorite series of all time. It was a dollar. And I know I'm a hypocrite because I said I don't like books about witchcraft, but I think this is going to be an exception. We'll find out. I also was very shocked to see there was a copy of Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ying, and this was $4 when it was originally $27. And Celeste Ying has another book out called Everything I Never Told You, which I read earlier this year and gave like four, four and a half stars. It was pretty good. This one is another literary fiction book about motherhood, a Chinese American family, which is to be expected because I believe Celeste is Chinese American. Her books just all explore a lot of different subjects that I find interesting and well written. So here's my haul. I started a romance book, Hold Me by Courtney Milan. I don't know if that one's gonna stick. I don't know if I'm gonna continue with that one. So I'll update you tomorrow if that ends up being the case. I feel like a dummy whenever I stay home over the weekends because I just do nothing and I lay in bed and I just ate like an entire box of Trader Joe's peanut butter cups and I feel like I weigh 300 pounds. I mean I do. I feel like I weigh a million pounds right now. It's been a minute since I've updated, which is partially because I'm just on a break a little bit from things. <laughs> I'm getting my shit sorted. I'm starting to do my homework earlier. When I went home over the weekend, I was just relaxing, so I didn't really have any updates. Now that I'm back here, I've just been reading the dick. <laughs> so now I'm 449 pages into Moby Dick, which means I only have 100 pages left. I'm really liking it. This is what I'm writing my research paper over. It's super fun to do. Re I mean, it's not fun to research it, but it's like interesting. <laughs> I forgot to mention this, but after I got back to school, I actually had a book waiting for me to pick up. I'd ordered this book and forgot about it, and now I have it, and I'm like, wow. Who is she? Six Lethargies by Keaton Henson. To be for real with you today, right now on camera, I don't understand what this is. <laughs> I ordered it not 
without knowing what to expect. I just knew this was sort of autobiographical thing about his life composing because he's not only a singer and songwriter, he's actually a composer now. Like there'll be photographs and then there'll be a couple poems interspersed. I haven't sat down to look at this yet. I don't even know if the score this is based off of is in the world. As you have seen in previous vlogs, I make dreadfully horrible financial decisions when it comes to supporting Caden Henson because I adore his music and if he sells a book for $96, I don't have qualms against buying it. So I think this was only like 20 something dollars with shipping and the UK cost adjustments. <laughs> and brief update on other current reads. I started the fourth book in the Wild Seasons series which follows the last character that is kind of like an add-on because she wasn't in the original trio of girls. Her plot line is sort of that she hasn't dated in a while and apparently her love interest, this could be a spoiler, her love interest is the ex-boyfriend of the first girl. But I think she's fun so far and relatable because hashtag not had a boy in a while or <coughs> ever. Anyway, I only got like six pages into that because school. However, over the weekend, I did start or get further into another new adult book. This one's Hold Me by Courtney Milan, which is the second book in the Cyclone series, I think it's called. But the first book was called Trade Me. But this follows like side character from that. She's a trans student at university and meets this science department guy who's very like, He's very blunt with his feelings and kind of rude. But at the same time, these two people have online personas through blogs and comments and stuff. And they actually know each other through that, but they don't know it's the other. So like they hate each other in real life, but then online they talk to each other not knowing it's the other. So far, I don't know how to feel about it. I'm not a super big fan of the writing just because I think an editor should have taken another crack at it. There are scenes that are so long that don't need to be that long. And I'm only on page 50 and I'm already feeling like this is too long-winded in very unnecessary places. Also, the main guy is just very hateful toward women, which I'm assuming will be challenged later on and he'll change because I trust this author is a feminist author based on her first book and I really don't have any opinions on how this is so far because I am six pages into it with my Christmas bookmark and my Christmas music and my Christmas candle because October is not Scorpio season it's Christmas season. Quick tea in my tangent that I'll be tempted to cut out, but I'm gonna keep in. My periods are usually pretty manageable. Like for all my life, I've never had severe periods as far as like cramps and pain, which God bless, I'm so thankful for. But this morning, I woke up at 6 a.m. with the worst cramp pain I have felt in my entire life so bad that it was shooting down my leg. So I just wanted to say if you are a woman with endometriosis or any other type of illness or condition that gives you really severe periods or uterus pain all the time or hip and thigh pain by extension um you're my hero because I couldn't deal with it for the hour that I had to wait for Advil to kick in people with uteruses really put up with that that's all I'm just mad <laughs> what is that <laughs> <laughs> Child. Kesha has really lost it. This is like Britney 2007. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally having an aneurysm. Is that how they say? Vogue. Please don't hide yourself up there. <laughs> oh no. Reading update. Hey guys, me Nicole. <laughs> you sound half dead. I finished. There's someone inside your house. Hold on. Oh, was it good? It was really good, boy. I mean, solid three and a half stars, you know what I mean? Can we talk about something? Okay, this. <laughs> what up? She matches her clown. She's on her way to a dinner time. I need to take a sleep. Bye, everybody. Can you go to your side? Why do you have a helmet on now? I thought it was going We're going to bed. We gotta lock our doors, I Julia. I put it on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> go show Veronica what you look like. This is what college does to you. Hey guys, it's me and Nicole back with another reading update. I tried to do a reading update last night, but I got interrupted. And Whitney's not home and she left her camera here, so guess who found it and guess who's video recording? Me. I finished There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This was my spooky season book. 
I give it a solid three and a half stars. Go follow me on Goodreads. Just kidding. I haven't updated my Goodreads since 2012. Like this book. It was fun. It was enjoyable. It was spooky. I also have a book haul for you guys. So we went to Books A Million and um, I wasn't planning on buying books, but your girl bought books. I'm such a booktuber. God. I bought 99 Days by Katie Katukud, Katukud, I don't know. Katugno. Apparently there's some kind of like love triangle between like brothers and a girl. And I love the Summer I Turned Pretty series, so we love a retelling. I also bought Until Friday Nights by Abby Glines because I'm trying to get more into Abby Glines. I started her Sweet Little Things series, and so I wanted to try this out. And then I also got this book. This is a book I haven't heard of, and it's The Probability of Miracles by Wendy Wonder. And this gives me, like, the Fault in Our Stars vibe. So we love a retelling of that. So we have two retellings. Retellings of the Fault in Our Stars and the retelling of the Summer I Turned Pretty series. And then whatever this book is. I'm thinking of either reading 99 Days Until Friday Nights or Room. And this is like another spooky book for Halloween. So if you don't know what this is about, this is about this girl who's been trapped in her kidnapper's like tool shed and she has a kid and they try to escape. Vote down below which book I should read. Anyways, that's my reading update in my book haul. Uh, hey girly pops. Mm. Anyone else think her channel went downhill? Just me. Today. I need to hey guys! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna shit myself! Kaylin! <laughs> I'm seriously gonna cry. You have to hug me. That was scary. <laughs> Bitch! I wasn't ready. I'm open period. And there's a ghost in our apartment. Holy shit. Hey guys. <laughs> You gotta do this clip now. I'm very You're sensitive. Crying. I told you I'm crying. <laughs> <sighs> Welcome oh. home from class. I've been home. Have a good time. weekend, everybody. I saw your door, but I went to your room. I, I was like, where's Kaylin? You're like, came hey, in. <laughs> Under your bed. I've been bamboozled. No, I'm fine. Don't comfort me, <laughs> you whore. Anyone want a roommate? Because I don't want her anymore. Let's try this again. Now that Caitlin has left the apartment. <laughs> so that's the summary of my life. If she frightened me, I will cry. <sighs> I got a package. This is a package from Target. We got two Target copies of A Very Large Expansive Sea by Tahra Mafi. This one has two stickers, so that's festive. Online, I think it was like you had to have $35 shipping to be able to have free shipping or $35 of stuff in your cart to have free shipping. Let's do it. I might have just accidentally spoiled you on the last page of the book. Oops. Soft boys are my weakness. Okay, I just read the first chapter and it's so weird like reading new stuff from her. This is a sentence I can rarely say, but I'm holding in my hands words by Tahara Mafi that I haven't read before. What kind of life is that? So I got two copies. I know rationally a single person can't be the one to buy every copy of Apple Leaves and make it be a number one New York Times bestseller, but I really just wanted to contribute as much as I could so that it could be really high on the New York Times list. It was only number eight, which is fine. I mean, it's great to be on the list at all, but I was really hoping this could be like the out of the ballpark number one, but oh well. So, since I have two of these, I was gonna keep one around just to give it away to someone or if anyone comes along that needs a copy, I can be like, hello. I think that opportunity should be right now. If you wanna enter to win a copy of A Very Large Expanse of Sea, I wanna know what was your favorite book of this year so far. Let me know down below, I'll pick a random comment and then I'll send this to you. My weekend begins now. I'll bet you so much money, I'm not gonna do any of my homework. My body falls off the side of her bed Now I know what love feels like Don't let me turn into pain All of this is loveliness Chaos came, we let our head down on the feather cotton bed You find our heart and catch your breath Let the earth 